Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a credit card sized Ryzen powered SBC or mini PC, however you look at it. This is the all new DFI PCS F51. And last year we took a look at their older model with the Ryzen embedded R1000 series APUs. But in this one, we've got the brand new R2000 series APU, which does offer a significant boost in CPU and GPU performance. They're claiming up to 50% more performance on the CPU side of things with R2000. In this video, we've got a lot to test. I wanted to get into some benchmarks, some PC gaming and emulation. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So basically what we have here is a full-fledged credit card sized mini PC. You can call it a single board computer because that's basically exactly what it is. And over on DFI's website, they're stating that this is a 1.8 inch SBC. Give you a quick size comparison between it and the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, uh, given the performance that this little Ryzen powered board can put out, it's pretty amazing how small it is but it is lacking IO when you compare it to other boards on the market. That's one thing I'd love to see with this, just a little more added to it. We've got two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, gigabit ethernet, and a full-size HDMI port. We also have our power in over here, fan header, and an M.2 E key slot, so we could actually add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to this pretty easily. Since we're working with an x86 Ryzen CPU with this little board, we will need some cooling. Now the stock TDP is around 12 to 15 watts, but we can up that. They do offer this cooler here. Fins are aluminum, plate is copper. We've got that built-in fan, but this will add some bulk to the SBC. Once it's added, looks a little something like this. Still a relatively small mini PC. And we do have that controllable fan up top, so we can keep this thing from thermal throttling, even upping the TDP on it. They do offer a couple different CPU variants over on their website, but when it comes to the specs of the one we're taking a look at, we've got the Ryzen embedded R2514. Cores are based on Zen Plus. We've got four of those with eight threads, a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz, and a boost up to 3.7. Eight gigabytes of onboard LP DDR4 RAM. Built-in Radeon iGPU with eight CUs up to 1200 megahertz. Up to 128 gigabytes of eMMC 5.1 storage, and this officially supports Windows 10, Windows 11, and Linux. Okay, so originally on the built-in eMMC, we had Windows 10 Enterprise installed and it worked out well, but I went ahead and installed Windows 11 because we do have full support from AMD with these new R2000 APUs, and uh, yeah, it's actually really nice. I didn't need any extra drivers, uh, nothing here seemed to be missing. Ethernet's working, I've got all the USB working, and we can actually even control the TDP pretty easily using a third-party application. As you can see, we've got that R2514. Uh, this is the 8 gig model, and of course we've got those built-in Radeon 8 graphics. So these are still based on Vega, and uh, right out of the box, there's 2 gigabytes of the 8 gigs here dedicated to VRAM. Now from the BIOS, we can actually get in there and change basically anything we want. But uh, for this little setup here, we're going to be kind of at the stock configuration, at least from the BIOS. But I did take the TDP up. And it's pretty amazing what this little thing can do. So I'll give you a look here. We've got core temp, just easy to read that uh, power output of the APU. Running a stress test with CPU-Z nets us around 12 watts stock. Now this is great for just, you know, web browsing and things like that. But I know this chip has a lot more to offer. At 12 watts, we're not going to be able to reach the maximum clocks on the CPU and GPU. 
so I use a third-party application known as Universal x86 Tuning Utility. And with this, of course, we can up the TDP, we can set a static clock on the GPU, and uh, for my settings here, I've got a 45 watt and a 50. We're going to go with 45. Just apply it real quick. Now, when I run that stress test, you'll see this jump on up. So that APU is not pulling 45 watts by itself, but as soon as I throw some GPU load on it, we can definitely go up to 45 watts. I've taken this up to 55, but I think it's a little too high. At 45, it's not bad at all, and it does perform really well. I mean, I was surprised at what this little thing can do at this kind of wattage. And speaking of the GPU, give you a look here. This will go up to 1200 megahertz. And we can actually take this up to 1500 megahertz stably if you wanted to do a little bit of overclocking, which it's definitely going to help out. Now with this, obviously it's not made to be a desktop PC, but uh, you know, with the performance that this R2000 APU is putting out, it could definitely be used as a very small form factor PC. It'll do 4K video playback, and we'll definitely take a look at that in a second. But uh, web browsing here, really fast. We could add an M.2 uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter if we wanted to. But I'm just using the built-in Ethernet here, and it's a really snappy little system. So uh, let's check out some 4K video playback from YouTube. 4K, 60fps, HDR, stats Bernard's up at the top left-hand corner. Got a couple drop frames on the initial load-in, but this thing goes right through it. And even just at 12 to 15 watts, we can do 4K video. We're not pulling anywhere near 45 right now. The reason I wanted to take it up was for benchmarking and gaming purposes, because we definitely want those higher clocks. But yeah, this little board is totally capable of doing 4K 60fps video. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a few GPU benchmarks that I ran on this, and after that we'll jump into some PC gaming and emulation. Remember, Vega 8 graphics at 1200MHz, here's 3 d Mark Wildlife, this is a Vulcan benchmark, 3363, and Night Raid is only coming in with a 6073. We've got that lower clock Vega GPU here, but it doesn't mean it won't handle some older PC games, even some newer stuff at 720p, and emulation. So we're starting off really light here with Left 4 Dead 2. I actually wasn't sure how this was going to handle any kind of gaming, but it's not bad here. Medium settings, 1080p. We're getting an average of around 142 FPS. I could have taken this up to high, would have netted us around 82 on average, which is more than playable on a little single board computer like this. So let's take it up just a bit. OG Skyrim, one of my favorite games. 1080p, medium, and unfortunately, since we've got that lower clock GPU, we just can't get that constant 60 at medium. Now at low, it will run at 60 all day, and I'll tell you, playing it like this isn't bad. Not noticing any kind of stuttering or anything like that. And really, the only reason I know we're going under 60 is because I have Afterburner on screen. And the final PC game I wanted to test, at least for this video, was Street Fighter VI, the newest one on the list here. Uh, we're at the lowest settings, 720p, and we're right there on the edge of 60. Again, if we take that clock up, we could probably run this at 60. But I wanted to keep all of the clocks at stock for this video. Maybe we could do some overclocking in another video if anybody's interested, so let me know down below. But now it's time to move over to some emulation, because that's where this thing really kind of kicks off. Here's PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 4X resolution, DirectX 11 back in, constant 60. And I had a feeling, you know, checking out the PC gaming, we'd be able to run this really well. So let's take it up to PS2. Here's PCSX2 running Gran Turismo 4, 720p, DirectX 11 back in, really great performance. I could probably take this one up to 1080. Now, I don't think it's going to run every single PS2 game at 1080, especially something like God of War 2, but there's a lot of them that we can actually upscale pretty nicely. Great performer, given the form factor, as long as we can take that TDP up. Now, if you just wanted to use it as a desktop, you could do that at 15 watts and have a really good time with it. But if you wanted to get into some gaming, you will have to up that TDP. And that leads me kind of to the next question. Would you like to see SteamOS 3 running on this little board? We could install it on the eMMC or I could boot it up from a USB drive. We could start playing some games there, kind of have the whole Steam Deck operating system running on this little SPC. If you want to see a video like that, let me know in the comments below. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more about this board, I will leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see, let me know. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.